Hi guys, Adam here, also known as Gamer Abroad, coming to you on my channel, Gaming Abroad. And I recently got a question in my comments on whether or not I thought the human team was better than the Elven Union team. So instead of answering that question directly, let's take a look at it ourselves. There's a few different ways you can build your human team. But one thing you should always do with him is include the four blitzers. Blitzers are a very powerful character and we'll get into that later in the video when we start looking at the actual player skills. The two ways that I like building a human team would be the four blitzers, as I said, let's throw an ogre in there, let's throw a thrower because we gotta have someone to throw the ball and let's put in five linemen. Now if you look at the player count there, that's five, nine, 10, 11, so that's a full roster and that leaves us some options. One thing that I personally think is not an option is the re-rolls. We're gonna wanna put in three re-rolls. Here's where the options come in. You can put a 12th player on your roster should you choose. For example, if you're gonna lose one or perhaps you wanna use the Halfling Helpful for his more niche role, which we'll talk about later in the video. But I personally would go with the dedicated fans to fill in the rest of my expenditures and that'll allow me to make more money in the game. However, as I said, if you wanted to, you can do the Halfling Hopeful and then the rest in dedicated fans. Another way to build this roster would be to get rid of the Ogre and include and catcher instead. And I think that is also very, very viable. And in this case, you could actually do a lot more re-rolls. So four re-rolls, possibly even five re-rolls. And that is your 11 players and then do the rest in a dedicated fan. So one will leave you 5K left over. I've seen uh, other players do a little heavier on the catcher roll. And I like that idea also, because I think catchers are very, very powerful for players. Anyway, you really want to build your roster. I don't think there's really any wrong way to do it but let's look at the player skills themselves. One thing I do want to mention is the way that you earn money in this game has changed since Blood Bowl 2. The dedicated fans and the touchdowns is what makes the game decide your payout. So it's not just a random number anymore. So you must touch down the ball and you must have dedicated fans for those multipliers. Anyhow, I digress. Let's look at the players themselves. We're gonna skip the halfling hopeful. We'll come to him at the end. For the blitzers, you're gonna have four blitzers. You're gonna want to make one blitzer a very, very aggressive blitzer. And to do that, you're gonna wanna give them tackle and you're also gonna wanna give them mighty blow, which comes from the strength tree. For your supportive style blitzers, I recommend running three of them, unless you're not running any catchers for some reason, which is a viable strategy. Then you wanna make one of your blitzers your ball scorer. But for your supportive style blitzers, you're gonna wanna have them have guard under the strength tree. And of course, Mighty Blow to be more aggressive. Maybe Mighty Blow one or two. I'll let you decide how you want to build them. That's just like a basic basic strategy. As you get further and they get higher in level, you can decide where you want to go from there. Let's take a look at the catchers. The catchers are our great players on this team. So I actually can't tell you don't run any because there are viable lineups that don't run any. I would at least run one, perhaps even more. If you were to have four catchers, for example, you might want to make one catcher your star scorer. You always want to make one catcher your star score. In fact, you don't want to give them sprint and sure feet. You may even want to uh, give them that extra movement allowance and get them up to nine. Your supportive style catchers are going to look something like this. You're going to want to get block. Block is a staple in this game. Anytime you have body to body contact, you want that player to have block because it's just such an awesome skill. And then of course, we're going to want to get sidestep and diving tackle. Those are good options for supportive style catchers. Another way you can build a catcher too, which is kind of neat, you can make him as a ball thief catcher on defense. To do that, you're gonna wanna get tackle, wrestle since it's an agility based team, and of course, strip ball. Now let's look at the thrower. I would build the thrower almost the same way that I build my thrower on the Elven Union team, and that is to go with leader first. Leader is such an awesome skill. It allows you to have one extra reroll per half as long as that player is on the field. So make sure you keep him on the field. After that, you can go accurate, and then you decide how you wanna do. There's a lot of really neat strategies you can do with the human team and the Elven Union team too. And a lot, of, a lot of the teams in Blood Bowl 3 in general, since they removed the requirement to randomize your skills and you can now actually pick your skills. There's so many neat things you can do, but to start leader and accurate are very good for your thrower. Looking at the linemen, linemen are essentially body shields. That's all they are there for. They're to stand up there on the line of scrimmage. However, if you can manage to pull one off the line of scrimmage, I highly recommend giving one of them kick. If you can't do that, I would give it to a catcher or a blitzer, but kick is definitely a necessary skill for somebody to have on the team because you want to have a little bit more control where that ball is going to go. For your line of scrimmage linemen, you're going to want to go with block. As I said, block is a staple. If there's going to be a body to body contact, where else is there going to be body to body contact but the line of scrimmage? The wrestle would be really good. As a third skill, you might want to consider picking up guard. I know it's very expensive at 12 star player points, but it's very handy 
to have a player that can uh, mark other players and get that strength advantage and you can start getting some two dice rolls. And this is where we need to start talking about the halfling. If you're not going to have a halfling on your team, try to dedicate one of your linemen. And this kind of goes with every team in Blood Bowl 3. Try to have one player that has the sneaky get plus the dirty player ability because you really need a player to take the other team good players off the field as quickly as possible to really help you with the war of attrition to have a player on your team that has both those abilities. If you're not going to give it to a halfling, then give it to one of your linemen for sure. The last person we haven't talked about, or semi-person, is the ogre. Ogre is a very big, powerful goalie. That's how I look at him. He's just up there on the line of scrimmage. He's a big dum-dum. He's a bonehead. Sometimes you can't get him to do what you want him to do. He has a loner, so making re-rolls on him are pretty hard. When you start leveling your ogre, you're going to want to get block. As I said, block is a stable for body-to-body -body contact. And of course, you're going to want to get guard. Guard is a great skill. You want to be able to have him give assist whenever necessary on your lower strength players. Maybe you can start getting those two die rolls instead of those one die rolls. And if you can manage to level them up even further, I would go with uh, Stand Firm and then Juggernaut. Onto the Halfling Hopeful. The Halfling Hopeful is kind of a novelty, if you ask me. He should really only be used as your dirty player slash sneaky get. The guy who goes up there and fouls the player and gets their stronger players off the field as quickly as possible. Now that comes back to the question on whether or not the human team is better than the Elven Union team for that. I have my own opinions, but I don't want to skew your opinions. I'd actually like to hear your opinions in the comments. If you'll let me know what you think is a better team, the Elven Union or the humans, let me know in the comments and I'll respond to you there and we can debate it out there. And until that time, I just really want to say I appreciate your guys' support, your guys' comments, your guys' subscriptions, your guys' likes, everything that you've given me love-wise on my gaming channel has meant a lot to me and it's a big encouragement for me to continue sharing my gaming experience with you guys and hopefully see you guys out on some of my live streams. And if not, hopefully someday I'll see you guys out on the pitch. You guys are awesome and I hope you guys stay that way.